Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to class. Today we are going to understand the topics and the mode and the philosophy behind designing this course, utility of this course, and why uh, a person not even from linguistics background but from other disciplines also needs to understand complexities of language as a social phenomenon. The name of the course, Fundamental Concepts in Social Linguistics, uh, you know, it is, it has been named, it has been, the course has been named this way to make sure that the commoners or the person with no linguistics training and background can understand these fundamental concepts and uh, understand the nuances of these concepts. This course does not require any prior knowledge of linguistics. The course has been designed in such a way that even a common person who does not have training, specific training in the discipline will be able to understand. So this is a beginner's course in that way. But at the same time, uh, efforts have been made to make it grounded in the theoretical background of the discipline and also make the learner familiar with chronological developments in the discipline. Language is a beautiful product of human mind and it comes to us so naturally and easily that most of us do not even realize the complexities of it. We have no idea sometimes why our behavior and attitude towards speakers of other languages change. What do we think of other languages? What kind of biases we have about other languages? Uh, how do we associate with, with people who speak a different language? Right? Our social attitude, our social behavior, our association, the process of socialization, uh, all these are influenced to a great extent by our attitude towards our own language. So this course makes you familiar with an interdependent and symbiotic relationship between language and society. And we call it fundamental concepts in social linguistics to make sure that to understand the fundamental ideas in social linguistics. Social linguistics, a compound word, refers to two separate disciplines, sociology, and linguistics and how these two are related what is the common ground this is the basis of this course so welcome to a course on concepts fundamental concepts in social linguistics uh, language is a rule governed system and it allows us to communicate and socialize we cannot imagine socialization relating to each other, the interaction without language. Language forms communities, right? We all have linguistic allegiance. We all relate to ourselves, uh, keeping at the center language that we use to interact and socialize. So we can have formal properties of language, right? That talks about the structure and uh, formal properties of it. And the other is the language used. 
functional properties. So what are the factors which determine a particular selection of lexicons, expressions, how language is used in a context, social cultural context? Does culture and society we live in, uh, you know, do they have influence on the language we speak? And do languages have influence on social patterns and cultural practices. So that's a that's a long debated issue. But there is no denial that language does have influence and impact on social order and cultural practices and vice versa. Social orders, social configurations and cultural norms and practices do influence language. So they are interdependent. So language is not uh, you know, an independent entity. It is grounded socio-culturally. Right? It has roots in a socio-cultural background. It it grows like an organism. We cannot take it take it out. If you want to understand a language, you require to understand the culture and social norms of these communities which speak, and then you can relate to it. Right. Uh, so, it's a socio-cultural product. It is used in a socio-cultural context, and the meanings that we derive, we derive in terms of a speaker's location in the socio-cultural space. So, if you want to understand uh, Tamil and Indian language, you need to understand the Tamil society. Right. Understanding a language. Right, makes you understand a complete new culture. It takes you to a new culture, new society. So we cannot keep them separate. So the mandate of this course is to underline this interdependent symbiotic relationship between language and the society it is spoken in. Language and the speakers, members of a speech community, how they are related. Its language is used for communication and socialization, interaction and verbal exchanges. But the role of language is not limited to that. It is a vigorous marker of our identity. Right? And we associate ourselves with a community by subscribing to the cultural practices and social norms. Language encodes our cultural history our social uh, patterns, right? uh, our common narratives, right? it represents our collective memory, narratives. So it is, it is very uh, you know, deeply rooted in our social history, in our, in our cultural history and norms. So uh, this course has a number of modules. We will have 12 modules in total. And I have tried to focus on one particular theme in a particular module. However, you will find some overlapping concepts and some overlapping modules. But 12 weeks, and it is difficult to encompass entire uh, range of a wide range of topics and themes in this in this discipline but i have tried to make it as accommodative as possible so concepts like language and society language and culture language and gender language and identity so how the social matrix, you know, the social uh, themes like gender, like class, right, how they determine the use of language, right, uh, what is the relationship between language and society, how it represents the social configuration, social stra you know, stratification, 
social status, social class. Uh, what is the relationship between language and culture? You might be uh, aware of Sapir Worf hypothesis, linguistic determinism. So, does language determine our cognitive capabilities and its use? We will see that. Right? We will understand language as a system to begin with in module 1. So, we will talk about language as a system, how multiple subsystems like you know phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics they interact and they form a single uh, composite form called language. So, how these subsystems interact and form a composite system, making language a complete system. Uh, we'll talk about uh, you know language and culture, where we'll talk about uh, linguistic relativity, superior or hypothesis. We'll talk about language and gender, how language encodes gender, and how gender is represented in language. Right. We'll talk about language and class. So social acts. Right. Does language vary according to the class? We'll talk about it in this course. Uh, dialects, right? And dialects are more of linguistic attitude, attitude of the speaker towards a particular language, a speaker towards the language they speak, and also others' attitude towards the language others speak, right? Register. So these concepts will be part of module one. Then we'll talk about how language is acquired, so acquisition of language, right? How do we understand the process of acquisition? What are the theoretical positions, right? Like behaviorism, how behaviorism looks at language acquisition, first language acquisition, how a human child acquires a language. Uh, you know, perspectives like, you know, uh, Chomsky's perspective, nativist theory. So the theoretical position taken by Chomsky in generative grammar, or, or the functionalist approach, right? So we'll talk about in module two. We'll talk about uh, you know various positions, theoretical positions, paradigms, and uh, you know understandings of language acquisition process. Then we'll talk about concepts like bilingualism, concepts like multilingualism, right? Uh, how is it significant for a speaker to understand and be able to use two languages? Does it influence the manner in which a speaker uses the language? What is the linguistic manifestation? Right? Uh, and what are the outcomes of such uh, linguistic situations? So, uh, you know, uh, concepts like diglossia, a ling social linguistic situation where uh, within the same speech community, we have two or more languages for various different functions. And the, the preference to use a particular language for a particular function is structured. It's not random and arbitrary. There's a pattern. So we'll discover that when we talk about diglossia. Concepts like code mixing and code switching. It's a bilingual outcome of a bilingual mind. So when a, a user prefers to mix items and you know concepts from one language to other. Right? What is the what is the motivation behind mixing two codes? What is the trigger? What which which allows a speaker to mix from two different codes and two di different linguistic sources? What is the impact of it in the social situation and context in which it is being mixed? Right? Uh, code switching. So in the single larger discourse. Uh, what is the motivation for a user to switch from one code to the other? 
So we'll talk about it. How does this phenomenon yield, uh, you know, hybridity? So how it creates linguistic hybridity? So we'll talk about it. Then we'll talk about concepts like pidgin and creoles. So what happens when two distinct communities with no language in common come in contact and sustain this contact for a longer period of time, motivated by, triggered by trade and colonization process, and how a new language is born because of this contact. We'll talk about concepts like, you know, uh, language contact and conversions, right? We'll talk about concepts like you know, language maintenance and shift, specifically in case of migration, when a population migrates and settles in a new geographical location, how do they maintain their own language and culture, and how gradually this process leads to shift. We'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, another module there we'll talk about, let's say, the statutory status of languages, right? So, uh, language planning, how, what is the process of language standardization, linguistic policy, right? Uh, we'll talk about, uh, you know, for example, the constitutional provisions, statutory provisions. We'll talk about linguistic tension and linguistic harmony, right? So there are there is a wide range of topics that we are going to cover in this course. Interesting topics, and these these topics do affect our everyday life. So social linguistics is a discipline, uh, and I have I have made made special effort to make sure that these concepts reach the lay person or even uh, somebody who doesn't have training in linguistics and the discipline, a formal training, will be able to relate to it. And you can observe things around you, right? Uh, idea of mother tongue, for that matter, right? Standard versus non-standard languages, vernacular, right? So, so these are the concepts which form the foundation of this course. So these are the basic fundamental concepts we are going to explore in this course. So when we say social linguistics, there are two disciplines that we can imagine encoded in the name, sociology and linguistics. So this, this term social linguistics came into higher use and currency uh, not until 1960s. Though the term was used uh, long back, but the term the way we know today in modern linguistics, 1960s are fertile time for emergence of this discipline. And, uh, We can see a series of series of publications, series of works that came into to limelight that that gave foundation to this this new discipline. Uh, it's not the case that earlier people did not work in language and society relationship. If you look at dialectology. Right, uh, it's a long, long practice tradition. Before, much before 1960s, so uh, early 19th century, it started. Right. So, if you look at the the nature of the work before 1960s, by the way, it's important to understand why 1960s are so uh, that that decade is so important post Second World War and uh, emergence of multiple hybrid disciplines, 
we find the Bloomfieldian taxonomy and the behaviorist paradigm giving shape to understanding of the field. And lots of new works pioneered the, the development, like the behaviorist publication by B.F. Skinner in 1957, Verbal Behavior, followed by severe criticism of Chomsky, Chomsky Chomsky criticism of this uh, behaviorist paradigm, behaviorist paper called Verbal Behavior, Skinner's paper, and uh, you know, a beginning of a new paradigm called generative grammar, nativist paradigm, when language becomes uh, you know, uh, an innate, innate endowment. So, unlike behaviorist, it becomes innate endowment in nativism by Chomsky. And then Chomsky's insistence on uh, understanding the abstract structural representation of language in human mind, being making it so abstract and uh, hardcore technical you know, idea that attracted a lot of criticism from other people who were, you know, advocating the language use, functions of it. So, Chomsky emphasizes on form, whereas a group, group of his scholars criticized Chomsky and focused on the functions. So, we see a series of, uh, you know, responses by different scholars like Dalhams. M.A.K. Halliday, right, who emphasized on language use. So, Chomsky's idea of linguistic competence was, was countered by Dalhams with, with the idea of linguistic, uh, sorry, uh, idea of communicative competence. So, we see that this, this, the series of responses and reactions gave a renewed discussion and, uh, you know, it opened new frontiers of discussions in the field. And by 1960, the scholars like, you know, Basil Bernstein, like William Lebov, like Dalhams, M.K. Halliday, Joshua Fishman, Ferguson, you know, Suzanne Edwin Tripp, right, William Bright, right, people. So, all these people came up with some responses in some form or the other, emphasizing on the socio-cultural manifestation of language. And they emphasize on the context in which the language is being used. So, language is not simply means of communication, but it also, in, you know, uh, constructs our identity. There are social factors behind language use, right? So, if we collate all these responses and reactions to this new development, we see that 1960s was a fertile decade and it gave birth to social linguistics as an independent new discipline. Okay? So, this course also takes you along with all these developments and makes you familiar with the contributing seminal works of these scholars which, which shaped the form of this discipline, right. Uh, so, moving on, from dialectology to social linguistics, it is a long journey. In dialectology, uh, the emphasis was to understand the variation in terms of grammatical variations, phonological variations, accent, style. So, language was studied as, as an object and how uh, it varies in different locations and as an input or as a data, we used to choose the rural population, which had less mobility, uh, uneducated people, 
because then you won't have this uh, you know risk of mixing of languages and varieties so there was a biased choice for understanding the dialectological variations right and it was considered as sub discipline of uh, linguistics uh then we see the aim of dialectology was to understand and record the variation in language use and the focus was on regional variations geographical variations right and this this entire enterprise try to document individual locations and the individual dialect used at that location the properties of that particular dialect right uh then it was sort of a uh, a linguistic geographical data and producing linguistic maps so they studied language variations in terms of phonological variations syntactic variations you know the the lexicons used and this dialectological study did not focus on the social aspects of language so it was more focusing on the structural part of it the form of it so what form is used at what place how it varies from the other place and uh, what are the changes and variations that we can underline so these are the motivations or aims of dialectology right though it has studied language in use but from geographical point of view its location group is speech community and uh, it was more of a contrasting from one particular dialect with the other and establishing the fact that this dialect is different from this this dialect in terms of phonological variation syntactic variations or lexical variations right but it did not focus on the sociological factors socio cultural context in which they are used so it has studied specific space and specific community with a specific dialect right uh they use the same method that we use till date but with little modification although so they used to go to such places remote places record their speech create tape tapes uh they used to focus on non mobile elderly uneducated not traveled rural population right so in that case the choice was biased and very focused they would they would collect list of items vocabulary right and they used to have questionnaires both written questionnaires and oral questionnaires and that gave them a huge variety of data they would analyze it and they would establish the properties of x dialect spoken at particular place and this is how dialectal variations were recorded uh in mid 20th century what we see that the works try to integrate social factors to an extent and they fo started focusing on urban dialectology as well so apart so there was a shift from rural dialectology now we come to urban dialectology so the focus was on urban dialects varieties but the primary focus still remained on phonology and grammar of the dialect so they would record quasi conversational speech and here also the choice of informants was biased right but slowly we see the social factors and social aspects taking center stage in studying language so language 
gradually drifting towards being an being a social object right and so the, the sociological factors cultural factors have started emerging in the writings of people and you know how these influence the language use when we talk about modern social linguistics as a as a separate discipline then 1960s is a milestone decade and i call it decade because you know it's not just a work of one or two years the entire 1960s as a decade produced a lot of seminal work that changed our perception about language and that grounded language in a socio cultural context whether you call it in fishmans in ferguson's uh, terminology sociology of language or you call it social linguistics it's more almost you know they are being used interchangeably now and uh, there was a deliberate campaign and effort to establish this discipline and there were certain founders and founding fathers we should understand and we should know so this course will focus on 12 such scholars we call founding fathers right of modern social linguistics so we will have two modules dedicated to the works by such people like william lebob lebob pioneered a school devoted to showing the relevance of social determinants of variation for linguistic theory right so how social stratification right uh influence and control the language use so it was a lebobian variation variationist tradition right his his uh, two two of his famous works martha vineyard island island case study and fourth floor survey new york are are two pioneer works we'll talk about it in that module that established uh, you know the social stratification of language right then a uh, british sociologist like basil bulstein who worked on class related codes so right that pioneered a series of works right then a person like dalhams he's also a founding father of modern social linguistics Delheim's response to Chomsky's linguistic competence in in terms of communicative competence and his his work on ethnography of communication the speaking model that changed the understanding of language as a social reality right person like John Gumpers he's also founding father of modern social linguistics so john gumpers who pioneered the work in interactional socio linguistics language in use then charles ferguson a seminal work on diglossia the term diglossia he he coined the term diglossia right where he studied functions of language right so, so the socio linguistic situation where two varieties of the same language or two different varieties are used for two different social domains functional domains formal informal domains then we come to joshua fishman's work on sociology of language social sociology sociological factors which determine language use so the six william lebob basil bernstein Delheims, John Gumpers, Charles Ferguson, and Joshua Fishman. Anyone who wants to understand social linguistics, anyone who wants to understand the symbiotic relationship between language and society, language and culture, cannot overlook 
the seminal contribution of these six linguists in the field. So, when you want to understand social linguistics, you need to understand these six, you know, founding fathers and also their work, which gave foundation for the emergence of a new discipline. But they are not alone, six people like William Wright, who is credited for uh, a very uh, you know, deep understanding of native languages and cultures. And he is credited for research in Native American languages and their cultures, right. Uh, then Ellen Grimshaw, for that matter, who visited India in 1961 and got interested in social context of uh, language and contributed a lot. Then Einar Eugen, uh, a Norwegian who was the first to talk about linguistic ecology, right? Uh, who was the first to talk about one of one of the first people to talk about language planning and uh, the study of Norwegian language planning in 1966 that came out is a groundbreaking work and still cited. Then people like Uriel Van Rick with seminal work for understanding language contact, minority languages and language revival. We cannot overlook. Then Suzanne Irwin Tripp who was a psychologist but her study uh, on compound and coordinate bilingualism and child language acquisition cross-culturally established the socio-cultural context and acquisition process, right. So, in order to understand social linguistics as a discipline, you know, we need to understand this 11, 12 founding you know, we call founding fathers or founding pillars of modern social linguistics. So, we have dedicated two modules to understand these 12 people and their seminal work, which gave, you know, a rock solid foundation to this discipline. So, people like William Lebov, people like Basil Bernstein, people like Dalhans, people like John Gumpers, Joshua Fishman, Charles Ferguson, William Wright, Ellen Grimshaw, Ina Ryojin, Uriel Venrick, and Suzanne Irwin Tripp. And the list is not exhausted, right? Because in terms of other concepts, we will also bring in some other people and research, uh, researchers and, and you know, scholars in the field, right. So, so they will have, they will found, uh, you know, have foundation in other modules. We will talk about language planning, right. We will talk about types of planning. We will talk about Indian context, trilingual formula. Right, a statutory uh, status of languages in India. We will talk about multilingual Indian ecological system. We will talk about education policy. We will talk about national education policy. Right. So, this course is more of a, a general understanding of language as a phenomenon and its deeply rooted. Uh, you know, state in the socio-cultural context. So, how language is socio-culturally rooted is the mandate of this course. Uh, this course does not require any formal training, I repeat. And one does not have to be a linguist to understand this course. But learners from various disciplines like sociology, like political science, anthropology, 
लिटरेचर फिलोसफी कंपेरेटिव लिटरेचर राइट एंड अदर सोशल सोशल स्टडीज डिसिप्लिन दे विल फाइंड दिस कोर्स वेरी यूजफुल फॉर देम टू अंडरस्टैंड लैंग्वेज एज अ फिनोम एंड मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ इट इन आर एवरी डे लाइफ ऑल ओवर so i welcome all of you to this course and we will uncover a number of known facts even i mean this course does not claim that it's going to introduce you to some unknown mysterious and very uh, technical uh, themes and topics we are going to talk about common themes common topics which we never paid attention to which we could not look at closely right so this is a generalized course for a wide variety range of learners and participants and it does not presuppose any understanding of linguistic theories but tells you in a narrative mode the beautiful story of language in our life in our social life how it constitutes our identity you might have seen a lot of political conflicts originate into linguistic conflicts from linguistic conflicts right look at for example creation of bangladesh a recent example right uh, this was urdu versus bangla conflict which led to division of east and west pakistan right uh look at the linguistic reorganization of states in india for that matter and look at the undercurrents right uh multilingual societies like india or uh, post colonial societies right they have been struggling to frame a suitable language policy and experimentations are still on we in india also have experimented a lot and uh, indian constitution adopted in on 26 january 1950 uh you know recognizes the importance of multilingualism and devises schedule 8 to include multiple languages as official languages so india statutorily recognizes Uh, the society as multilingual society and today we have 22 languages in schedule 8 scheduled which are considered official languages of india unlike united states of america for that matter where there is no official language there is no declared official language english right uh, is the is the language of united states and there is a movement by a group called english only movement unlike france which is a declared monolingual state right so so there are many complex situations when we talk about language policy and planning we'll talk about process of standardization right we'll talk about uh, stages of planning and uh, we'll talk about the post colonial societies where this question is still uh, remains unanswered so uh, you know this course introduces a wide range of topics right to to develop a fundamental understanding of language in society language in use and that's why we have named it fundamental concepts in social linguistics right uh so when we study languages we often focus on language itself but this course talks about the language as a socio cultural phenomenon right how it it constructs our identity right how it you know configures a social class 
how social configuration right is mimicked in linguistic stratification what is our attitude towards the speakers of other language what is the motivation of mixing the codes so all such general questions which you which you which you never focused on separately you will get a chance here to discover right these ideas with a new perspective so i welcome participants from all disciplines social science disciplines not only linguistics to participate and you know discover the beautiful world of language so this is the mandate of the course i welcome you again and believe that in coming modules 12 modules we will be able to understand language as a socio cultural phenomenon so join the course and let us begin our journey thank you very much